ETRC 2023 is back on track. We are back from a very long summer break and we are now finally starting to race again in the Czech Republic. Most, the racetrack known for being fun. And there's also Adam Lachko, former European champion. And he also like was, I have to race, I have to come back to my hometown. So we can wait to see him race and of course can wait to see the others race. Very happy I'm come back for one race in this season because we have very uh, tough season in the GT cars and I'm very happy I'm back because it's a lot of Czech spectators every year coming here and uh, this is the reason why I'm back. We're not even starting out the race yet and there's already a lot that needs to be fixed, Andre. I can see an engine flying and another one coming in. What exactly happened over there? Yes, uh, not, a, not a best start for us today. Uh, we have a big, uh, yes, a big problem with our engine and now we changed the engine and hopefully we can uh, participate in uh, qualifying. You did it! Yes, very happy. Uh, now we can go to the qualifying. Yes, thank you. Jochenan, second fastest in qualifying today, so uh, I was hoping for you to be the fastest of all. What happened? Why are you second again? Oh, thanks a lot for the wishes, but uh, it, it's not happened, yeah. What happened is, uh, on the first really fast lap, I'm a little bit careful in the safety. I go on the safety point and the lap time is good, and I think, okay, it's possible to go in the pole position. And the second fast lap, I push a lot, and I push, push too much. Yesterday there already has been a big celebration in the village close by. People got signs, like got autographs, pictures were taken. So this really has been a big blast starting up and we can wait to see the actual race happening. Managing director of the ETRC. And before we're starting out, like really speeding up the racetrack, talking about what has been happening already yesterday, speaking qualifying, big celebration here in the Czech Republic. Uh, let's quickly jump over to the race season itself because it's very futuristic already, talking biofuels. The tires are not only used one time as we know it from former racing, they will have a second life. They're actually going back on the normal road. So it's really lovely to have you here. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's really great to be back uh, after the season break. We had a fantastic, how you say, last race with the Nürburgring and the uh, release uh, of the first full electric uh, race truck prototype by Eveco and Team Hahn. Uh, as you mentioned, this is one part of the sustainability transition, tire retreading by our partners of Goodyear. We have uh, the innovation camp, which you see uh, in, in our background, completely open for any kind of technologies, because this is also how the market of, of uh, truck industry is, uh, is doing, and we are kind of embedded. looking quite relaxed so far but he can be relaxed he has the most points of all in this season and he already has had a really nice qualifying yesterday you are like let's say the flying pick of the season aren't you what is your secret being so fast this year um yeah you know i don't know about any secret you know we just you know try to do a good job you know be, be precise you know be prepared uh, try to find a good setup you know and then put together a good lap in qualifying and it uh, usually worked i mean well i mean so far this season it worked it definitely had been working for norbert kish as he racked up another pole position here at autodrom most as the championship got its second half of the season underway 
Jochen Hahn would join him on the front row with Antonio Albacetti and Jamie Anderson just behind. And as the sun shined at Most, it was a great start by Jochen Hahn that would unfortunately go under investigation for a lot of the race. Norbert Kish held the lead out of Turn 1 while the rest of the field came together in the background, sparking a fantastic fight in the Promoters' Cup, with drivers like Mark Taylor and Stefan Faas fighting over third and fourth. Norby opened up an early advantage, but the early battles that were really developing in the middle were Lucas Hahn and Steffi Halm, as well as those in the Promoters' Cup. Stefan Fast trying to put the pressure on Mark Taylor, but the truck deciding that it had other ideas, with a couple of clips of the kerb resulting in some front-end damage. We were all waiting to see who would crack first, but it seemed like it was going to be the bodywork itself on Stefan Fass's truck, as Mark Taylor struggled to stay within the narrow confines of this very twisty Czech circuit. It was great entertainment for everybody though, and the perfect way to start the weekend in the sunshine, and with body panels littering the circuit, Norbert Kish continued to open up his advantage at the front of the pack. Eventually, Jochen Hahn would receive a five-second penalty for an out-of-position start. The question mark was now going to be over whether Jamie Anderson would inherit third place. Antonio Albacetti had already automatically moved up into second, but as long as Jochen finished five seconds ahead of Jamie, he would take third. Norbert Kish crossed the line to take another textbook victory. Antonio Albacetti would cross the line third but finish second, and Jamie Anderson would miss out on third by 25 thousandths of a second. Lucas Hahn would take the victory in the Promoters' Cup over Jose Eduardo Rodriguez, but Norbert Kish racked up another victory to add to his impressive tally this season. Congratulations, good to see you again. <laughs> 11 laps later, still flying in the front, so this has been a blast for you, right? Oh yeah, um, good race, very happy with the result. And uh, yeah, you know, like I said before the race, we need a good start. You know, I think we, with Johan we had a pretty equal start, but then you know, a very brave late breaking into first into the into turn one, and then I could go in front safely. Normally we, we speak about these rules on the, from the start procedure on the briefing, but this weekend we don't speak about it. And I think, oh, then maybe we handle it like in the past. And really, in the end, I forgot it. And yeah, it's five second penalty, so podium. With, I don't know, thousands of per second. It's okay, but not really happy. An understandably not completely happy Jochen Hahn. He drops down into third place after his penalty, but just holds on to his podium position, while Norbert Kish takes the race victory ahead of Antonio Albacetti. Jamie Anderson finishes in fourth ahead of Sasha Lenz, with Lucas Hahn and Steffi Halm behind, and Adam Lachko in eighth place on his first race back. It's all very close and very tight, though, in the Promoters' Cup as they round out the order. second race of the Goodyear FIA European Track Racing Championship and the second race is about to start very shortly but right now the boys and girls are handing out some signed autographs to their fans and there has been a lot going on already this morning and I'm just jumping over to Stefan Fass because his truck really had some damages going on this morning already so are your mechanics still fixing everything for race number two right now? Yeah, we are now just ready to complete everything together. To the, yeah, but I can now speak Deutsch. Yeah, also, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, he's very ashamed of speaking English, so he's doing this in German, but I will translate for you in a second. It's just, uh, I hope you will not be like this on the racetrack in a second. Nein. <laughs> so, is your, is your truck ready to race? Your truck is already ready to race, I know. Also, ich weiß ja nicht, uh, natürlich ist unser Auto fertig, genauso wie im Stefan seine auch. Also, auf Englisch, ja. Yeah. For sure, my truck is ready, uh, the truck from Stefan. I think it's ready for the race and uh, yeah, I hope we have a good race together and then it's fine. After an exciting first race of the weekend, nobody could have predicted what would happen at the second one. 
Adam Latchko on the front row alongside Steffi Halm stayed out of trouble unlike those at the back of the pack. A big collision between Andre Kurzim, Stefan Fass and Mark Taylor resulted in the latter being thrown into the wall. Luckily Mark was okay, but the truck would take no further part in the rest of the weekend. And with the red flag out, the clean-up operation could begin as Taylor's number 81 truck was recovered. A big shunt into the wall, but Mark was perfectly okay. Did you understand what happened to you and your truck, Stefan? Oh, sorry. The man who always stays out of trouble, maybe not. I ha ich habe gerade das erste Mal das angeschaut. Ich äh, habe das nicht mehr so im Kopf gehabt, aber ähm, so wie es jetzt aussieht, äh, wurde der André praktisch zwischen uns reingequetscht und hat sich dann an meinem Hinterrad aufgebockt und hat mich auf die Seite und ich habe in dem Fall mit meiner vorderen Seite den ähm, Mark Taylor getroffen und der Mark Taylor ist dann vor mir abgeflogen. Aber ich, ich habe das so nicht wahrgenommen. Ich habe das jetzt gerade erst äh, das erste Mal gesehen. Und man sieht halt ganz deutlich, dass der André praktisch an meinem hinteren Rad war und hat mich so rüber gedrückt. Und in dem Moment bin ich nach links raus. Ich habe zwar noch gelenkt, das habe ich noch im Kopf und habe auch gebremst, aber trotzdem. So he doesn't really remember what has been going on, because it's been quite a qu quick act, because you're like focusing in the front. You're actually like just pushing to get further on. So he said he knows that someone got in contact with his rear left tire, which also pushed him to the outside, like someone tried to squeeze in. And he was the one turning Mark Taylor then or pushing Mark Taylor. So it turned so quickly. The race would eventually get underway after an almost half hour delay to make sure that the circuit was all cleaned up and everything was safe to go racing again. And with some trucks missing body panels and entire parts, the race would finally get back up to full speed with Adam Latchko and Steffi Halm on the front row. An interesting start was presented to us once again though as Steffi Halm missed the start with an interesting slow speed start from Adam Latchko, meaning that Jochen Hahn and Lucas Hahn went side by side into turn one in second and third place. Unfortunately, after a bit of bumping and boring in the middle of the pack, that's not how they came out of it. Lucas being pushed and sliding into the side of Jochen, meaning that a bunch of them all had to regain to the circuit as quickly as possible and then try and recuperate some positions back up the pack. But it was Lachko, Halm and Anderson, the top three. Stefan Fass was right in the middle of the pack now as well with Andre Kurzim, or what was left of Andre Kurzim's truck anyway, in the middle of the field. He was instantly having to defend from fellow Iveco driver Lucas Hahn, while Jochen, his father, tried to also take advantage of their battling. Adam Latchko was sprinting away at the front of the field while Steffi Halm put on a fantastic defence in front of Jamie Anderson, Antonio Albacete, Jose Eduardo Rodriguez and Norbert Kisch. The whole field remained very close together in the opening laps, with nobody knowing how the order was going to get shaken up. Teammates Antonio Albacetti and Norbert Kish were close together in the quintet that would eventually battle for the lead, and the snake was only getting longer and longer. Jamie Anderson threw it up the inside into turn 10, but the door was closed by Steffi. Deemed as just a racing incident between the two of them, there was great respect once the race had finished in their discussion about said incident. Norbert Kish, eventually getting past Antonio Albacetti in all of the madness, was hoping to get back up to the very front of the field, but it was certainly one big snake with Adam Latchko at the head of it in the Freightliner. All the Czech fans were really hoping to see Adam cross the line in first place, and there was only a matter of moments before he would do so. He just had to hold off this train of them, piling in behind to try and take the race lead. Norbert Kish was one of the most patient drivers in there, hoping for an opportunity to come his way, but eventually it was Adam Latchko taking the win from Steffi Halm and Jamie Anderson. A very, very popular race win on home soil for the race-by-race -race entrant on his reappearance in the championship with some great drifting to mark the occasion. Adam, well fought through, so you must be really happy. And this was quite a tough job for you, keeping the elbows out, no? Yeah, it's very hard. Uh, we have a restart. I, the first start is also, also very good. Second start is, uh, again, it's, I have a good start. But after it's very tough because I have problem with uh, braking and I have a lot of understeer. Steffi see everything and she try everywhere, but 
she must defend uh, behind her and this is helping me a little bit and I use to the go to a little bit to the front. So the result of the second race of the day, Adam Latchko takes the victory with just over six tenths of a second back to Steffi Halm, ahead of Jamie Anderson, who completes the podium. Norbert Kirsch and Antonio Albacetti finish in fourth and fifth, ahead of Jose Eduardo Rodriguez, and then Sasha Lenz leads home a train of German drivers, including Jochen Hahn and Lucas Hahn. John Newell finishes just outside the top ten in one of the closest packs we've seen all season. Yesterday she managed to uh, take second place and today she's starting fourth, am I right? Yeah. So how are you feeling about the track and how are you feeling today? Yeah, the starting grid, uh, I'm, I'm three because of uh, Andre, he got a penalty of yesterday's accident at the start. So yeah, we will see what happened for sure. We have a wet race, so we have wet race start. And um, I think the first goal is to keep the truck on track and uh, then I hope we are fast enough to fight for the podium. After an exciting Saturday, everybody returned on Sunday to very wet conditions at Autodrome Most. This was exactly what we'd been expecting a little bit earlier on in the weekend. But after a wet qualifying shaking up the order, it was Norbert Kish on pole position once again, with Adam Latchko alongside him. The home driver was hoping to use his wet weather expertise to take a race victory, but that would be somewhat delayed by a yellow flag start, which would mean the trucks could run at full racing pace for the first lap, but just not overtake each other. This still meant that there were some gaps developing and some duets that were just forming in the middle of the pack, but the drivers could still spread out a little bit and prepare themselves for when we went green flag racing. Jochen Hahn was instantly on the move, getting past Steffi Halm on the exit of Turn 10 in the very treacherous conditions, with just a little bit of contact on the way through, and a kick of the tail from his Iveco to say thank you and goodbye. Sasha Lenz was an inspired driver in the wet conditions as well. Over the weekend itself, he was showing us a couple of times that he could pull this manoeuvre off around the outside of Turn 10, getting a wonderful run on the exit on Andre Kurzim and disappearing over the horizon. Andre wearing a few battle scars as the weekend had gone on, it had been a very unlucky and difficult time for him and the team. Antonio Albacetti had also made ground up the field, but Sasha Lenz was making more and more progress just ahead of him, this time overtaking Lucas Hahn into Turns 1 and 2. Something had clearly really inspired Sasha over the course of the weekend and he was getting faster and faster in the wet conditions, hoping for a podium from this race. But one man right at the front that was not really bothered whether he was going to get a podium or not was Norbert Kish, leading the way yet again in wet conditions, showing us all how it was done while the battles raged on behind. Sasha continued his charge through the pack and went past Steffi Halm, again using the same sort of overtaking manoeuvre to go around the outside and get a run on the exit. It was perfect use of a wet racing line, especially in a category that doesn't use wet weather rain tyres. The number three machine was certainly eyeing up position number three and a podium, but whether he had long enough in the race to do it was going to be the question mark. Norbert Kish may have had the windscreen wiper going at the front, but it was certainly a clear view ahead of him as he led the entire field around and opened up more and more of a gap over Adam Latchko in second place and Jochen Hahn in third. There was drama on the final lap though, contact between Antonio Albacetti and Steffi Halm put the latter in a spin, no further action was the verdict from the FIA and there was nothing else done regarding that incident, despite a lengthy investigation. Steffi managed to bring the truck home battered and bruised, but it was Norbert Kish winning again ahead of Adam Latchko. 
Such a pleasure being back with Norbert Kisch, uh, the man who really knows how to fly with a truck, I would say. So, I mean, what more can we say that you're obviously having a lot of fun over there? Oh yeah, it was uh, it was nice. It was the conditions was much better than in qualifying or at the end of the qualifying. So, it was you know wet, obviously very wet, but uh, no work for planning or whatever. So you know we could, uh, I think we could push a little bit harder, you know, in front with Adam. And you know, I I I, uh, I really happy that I am really happy that Adam is here, you know, because uh, Adam is always very good in the rain. Uh, so I am always very proud when I can beat him in the rain. So you know, today is a proud day. So another race victory for Norbert Kish sees him extend his championship lead even more. 11.4 seconds in the end over Adam Lachko, with Jochen Hahn getting another podium. Sasha Lenz was fourth ahead of Antonio Albacetti, who kept his fifth position after the incident, with Andre Kurzim, Lucas Hahn, Steffi Halm, Jamie Anderson and Heinrich Clementsecker rounding out the top ten. John Newell was 11th ahead of Stefan Fass, Louis Requenco and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez, interestingly finishing right at the back of the pack in the Promoters' Cup. The final race of the weekend was set to be a thriller as ever, with Steffi Halm and Lucas Hahn on the front row of the grid, but we would once again get underway under yellow flag conditions, just to keep things nice and safe. The circuit was still very slippery, very greasy, and the weather promised to get worse as the race went on. We were hoping that there was going to be a torrential rain shower that just missed the circuit by the end. The drivers and all the spectators would have to wait and see. It was three of Echoes in the opening laps though, Steffi Halm, Lucas Hahn and Andre Kurzim ahead of Antonio Albacetti, Sasha Lenz, Jochen Hahn, Adam Lachko and Norbert Kisch. As in race three, the drivers could drive at as high a pace as they wanted, but there was just to be no overtaking in the opening lap. That came as a bit more of a painful thing for Norbert Kish, as Adam Lachko seemingly slowed towards the end of the lap. Unfortunately, it was not something in Adam's control, and he had to retire his Freightliner before lap two with a gearing issue. This unleashed Norbert Kish, Jamie Anderson and Heinrich Clemens Hecker and co to go racing, but it meant that there was a big gap in the middle of the field. At the very front though, there was no such big gaps really, as all of them piled in together and Norbert Kish began his usual climb back up the order, dispatching first of Jochen Hahn. He chased Sasso Lenz and Antonio Albacetti, who would certainly get their elbows out, let's say in the first chicane. Very friendly stuff between the two of them, with Norbert Kish taking advantage for a glorious double overtake down the inside on the exit. It was exactly what Norby wanted, the easiest possible outcome, but it was the last thing everybody else in front wanted, as they saw the big red MAN coming in their mirrors. Sasha Lenz was working incredibly hard to defend his position from Antonio Albacetti, showcasing just how greasy the conditions were as the two trucks bounced off each other through the middle sector of the course, and Jochen Hahn took advantage. A lap later, Norbert Kish pulled off almost the exact same move on Andre Kurzim, moving himself up into third place. Andre knew eventually he was beat, and tried to hold on for some valuable championship points after a torrid weekend. Not even one lap later, and Norbert Kish went ahead of Lucas Hahn, the young German unable to defend. Steffi Halm was still leading the way and had opened up a gap of over seven seconds by this point, and it was looking likely that she could take a win. But the sudden torrential downpour hit the circuit, and Norbert Kish was able to use his wet weather expertise to get by and just sweep his way around the outside of the Aveco as they went down the hill. The rain did not stop though, and unfortunately the circuit had to be given a full course yellow, which eventually would turn into a red flag, and declared Norbert Kish the race winner ahead of Steffi Halm. How did you feel at this race? <laughs> oh, well, it was, a, it was a good race. It was a difficult race, you know, because conditions was difficult, because it was getting worse and worse and worse, but it's still, you know, until the last couple of laps, it was quite nice and we had a, a dry line but you know also the lights was very dark you know so you couldn't really see but uh, but I was confident that it's you know the dry line is there so like half of the circuit you could drive on the on the on the dry, dry line you know with really hard push 
and you had the grip and then you know the other half of the circuit was wet so there you had to take the the, the wet lines and on those places I could make some good overtaking maneuvers you know So a third race win of the weekend for Norbert Kirsch, who wins by just under five and a half seconds from Steffi Halm. Sasha Lenz finishes in third place ahead of Lucas Hahn and Jochen Hahn, with Andre Kurzim finishing in sixth after a very difficult weekend. Antonio Albacetti finishes in seventh ahead of Jamie Anderson, while Heinrich Clemens Hecker and Stefan Faas round out the top ten. Norbert Kish extends his championship lead now with 266 points on the board as it gets ever closer behind with Jochen Hahn, Sasha Lenz and Antonio Albacetti, Kurzim and Steffi Halm just together in the middle of the pack while Jamie Anderson continues to climb up the ranks with Lucas Hahn who is now in the overall championship the highest placed Promoters Cup driver. That's all from us here at Autodrom Most in Czechia as we kick off the second half of the 2023 season. We hope to see you all again soon at Zolder. <laughs>